Welcome along to another video presentation from Saturn Alliance. This video will focus on the installation of SharePoint version 3 onto a small business server 2003 machine. Help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation and improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au. Small Business Server 2003 comes standard with SharePoint version 2 installed. SharePoint version 2 appears as is on the screen now. SharePoint version 3 is the latest version which has significant benefits and is a well worthwhile inclusion into any small business server installation. However, it must be installed in a specific way to ensure that it doesn't cause issues with the existing version of SharePoint. Basically, you need to ensure that the new version, version 3, is installed in parallel to the existing version to avoid complications. The first step in this process is to download a document from Microsoft called Installing Windows SharePoint Services 3 on a server running Windows Small Business Server 2003. Once you have this, you will need to download and install two pieces of software. The first being the .NET 3 framework, again available from Microsoft, and finally Windows SharePoint version 3, also available from the Microsoft site. All three downloads are available from the downloads area in Microsoft and are available free of charge. So, once you've downloaded these, the first step that you need to perform is to install the .NET version 3. Simply execute the package that you've downloaded from Microsoft to commence the installation. To commence the installation of the .NET 3 framework, simply accept the license agreement and hit the install button. The installation progress will now commence and you'll be given a progress status bar in this window. Once the .NET 3 framework is finished installing, you'll be prompted with the following screen. Simply hit exit to complete the process. It's recommended that after the installation of the .NET 3 framework that you shut down and reboot the system. Once the .NET 3 software has been installed and the server rebooted, the next step is to install SharePoint. Simply run the application that was downloaded to commence the installation. Once the SharePoint files have been extracted, simply accept the terms of the agreement and continue. It's important here that you do not select the upgrade option or otherwise you will overwrite the existing SharePoint version 2 and cause problems. On the upgrade page you need to select no, do not upgrade at this time, then go to the server type and ensure that the selection here is set to standalone. Once these two options have been set, select the install now button to continue with the installation. Once the SharePoint services installation is complete, you'll be presented with the following screen. Ensure the Run SharePoint Products and Technologies Configuration Wizard checkbox is selected and select Close to continue the process. The SharePoint Technologies Configuration Wizard will now commence. Select Next to continue. You will be informed that a number of services will be stopped and restarted. Select Yes to accept this. The SharePoint Technologies Wizard will now commence installation and configuration of SharePoint. There are 10 steps in the process and it will run through each of these consecutively. Once the installation process is complete, there will be displayed a message indicating the configuration is successful. Click the finish button to complete the configuration wizard and launch the browser. 
You'll see that the browser launched by the configuration wizard produces an error. This is because at this point the default site for SharePoint version 3 and company web will not function. We need to make some additional changes to SharePoint version 3 for it to work on Small Business Server. So firstly close the browser window, go to Start, Administrative Tools, down to SharePoint version 3 Central Administration. Once the Central Administration website has launched, select Application Management from the tabs across the top. On the Application Management page, under SharePoint Web Application Management, select the option to create or extend the web application. Now select the option to create a new web application. In the Create New Web Application area, select a port number that is not a port that's being used. Typically don't use port 80 or port 8080. Scroll down and ensure that Create New Application Pool is selected. You enter a new application pool. Also set the security for this application pool as predefined being the network service. Ensure that the database server is set to Windows Authentication. And finally, select the server name, which is the small business server, for the SharePoint Services search server. Once this is complete, press the OK button to commence the creation of the web application. On the Create Site Collection page, enter a title for the new site. Also enter a description if required. Scroll down to the website address and select Sites. Then select a site name. Select Team Site from the template area. Enter the administrator name for the site collection administrator and hit OK to create the site. Once the site has been successfully created, you will see this message. Click on the link that is presented to bring up the new site. You should now see the new SharePoint site that has been created. Notice that the address of this website is the server name, colon, the port and the information that you provided during the setup. We now need to go back and to remove the default SharePoint version 3 site, so we return to the central administration, select application management. From the SharePoint web application management we select delete web application. In the top option here under web application we want to make sure that we've selected the server, the default name which is the server name. We select to delete the content databases as well as selecting to delete the iOS website. Make sure that you've chosen to delete the default SharePoint site not the one you've just created with a port number. Once you've selected this select the delete button to remove this website select OK at the next prompt. When the website is successfully removed, you'll be returned to the application management page. Simply close this. Next thing we need to check is that the normal SharePoint version 2 is running. To do this, go Start, Administrative Tools, Information, Services Manager. Check that both the default website and company web are running. If they are not, simply right mouse click and start once again. Thank you for watching.